welcome to Rabbi Rashi Foundation, Swarleen Kaur, founder, The Talk Room, which is an exclusive personality development institute, three times TEDx speaker, is a public speaking coach, and above all, a beautiful soul and my very dear friend. Aapka bhat bhat Thank you. Thank you so much. To start with Swarleen, tell us about brand Swarleen Kaur and your brand, The Talk Room. Over to you. Thank you so much, Rashi, for this question. Swarleen and Talk Room are inseparable. So the identity remains the same. It's about speaking. It's about communication. It's about how much you know about yourself and others and how much you can convey. So when we say we convey, we communicate and we confer, it gives the entire development of the person. What we see today is people not able to communicate with each other. And if we bridge that gap somewhere, I think we do justice to our works. So the talk room, as the name also suggests, talk. Because what we feel is lacking in today's world is people do not either have time to talk to each other or if they even have time, they may not know how to do that proper communication. And that's what the talk room and Swarleen is all about. So I think, Rashi, it was my passion to speak when I was in college, from my district levels to getting into my national levels at the extempore. Uh, this passion was always there. Teaching did fulfill this passion to a great extent. I would communicate with my students. And I would laugh at when my students would say, why don't you become our coach and counselor? And I would just laugh it and brush it away. But I think after certain um, years, I started to think almost giving 2018 years, you know, to the education sector, I started to realize that there was something more that I wanted to do for people around how to, you know, enhance their personalities, how to enhance their speaking skills. If I have it in me, let everybody come across and maybe I could help, um, you know, people. So that's where my journey started from winning an international public speaking championship to getting uh, a Josh Talks assignment to getting my first TEDx assignment in 2020 in Mumbai. I was, you know, at cloud nine because it could be a dream to any speaker to get to TEDx. So there I got this assignment and my first TEDx happened. Looking at my first, I got the second opportunity at Allahabad. And that was especially for women, which really encouraged me to do this one. The third one still, I just recently done it. And it was the most precious one because I got the uh, invite from governor's house. So this was the first time in India any Raj Bhavan was um, doing a TEDx. And when I got it from the government of Uttarakhand, I was like, oh, God, this is me. And um, it, it really went pretty well. The governor so was very happy with the points that I put up because I had married technology to soft skills in the talk. So I think that was completely mesmerizing to hear other speakers also. And that's when you understand the power of speaking, the power of communicating, I think that, that uh, my three TEDx are um, um, an award to me. I take them as the best accolades that I could receive in my life. Wow. This is amazing. And congratulations for all your achievements, Swarleen. So tell me about your reachability with Talk Room. You're based in Dehradun. How are you mentoring people? Let's see. And what exactly inspired you? Working with students for a good 18 years. I think I started to know them from inside. And I could see where the gaps were. I wanted to bridge those gaps. I wanted to come across to such people who really wanted help in sharpening and shaping their personalities. Specifically, I will talk about the intrapersonal skills also, which I saw that people were not aware of especially the youngsters. There were a lot of confusions and cures in the minds of these uh, youngsters. And this would not, because I was taking grades 11th and 12th, it would not stop here. 
But after grade 12 also, when they would go to the first years, they would get back to me and say, ma'am, we do not know whether, you know, we're on the right direction. Uh, have we taken the right uh, uh, course for ourselves? They would just be confused. The reason which I thought was that they were, they were not prepared with their own skills. They had never honed their own skills. They had never got the opportunity to understand themselves. So that's where I thought that the biggest gap was. And this, I thought, could be just covered up when they understood how important their skills could be. Maybe communication, maybe uh, self-confidence, self-esteem. So I thought something has to be done. And that's where I quit my job, resigned uh, from being an HOD of the uh, you know, English department in a school. And I thought that it's high time I have to work for them. So gradually, my students, first of all, it was my own students who started coming back to me. They trusted me. They'd seen me. And they showered a lot of love. And there was a lot of mouth publicity happening through them. And I started getting assignments from Singapore, Canada. Um, we've done some in Saudi Arabia, Riyadh, uh, Dubai. You've done some in Bahrain. A uh, lot of countries we started getting opportunities from and this started happening online because it's a hybrid model that we are working it's like online sessions offline sessions and then uh, you know I devised wonderful meaningful sessions for them we planted some incorporated some tests psychometric tests also for them which helped them and we joined hand with some psychologists who could help us understanding these scientific traits of the personalities. So this really worked well. I think that blend of science and humanities is always a great blessing. So it came as a blessing to us too. And people started responding more. And that's where we could see the change also happening. People trusting us more because they knew it was also with a blend of science. So this came as just not putting up in the air that we are doing soft skills, but it meant changing and making your belief more stronger with the, with the skills you have. We are just going to hone them. We're just going to shape it. You already have it in you. So the offline mode and the online mode both started working well after the lockdown. And today I think I'm working pan India across the globe and I have almost uh, 500 plus clientele as of now. Absolutely wonderful. Super proud to hear all this. Okay, Swaleen, what exactly is LSRW and its impact? LSRW is the backbone of communication. L stands for listening. S stands for speaking. R is for reading and W is for writing. So when we blend all these together, I found this very valuable when I saw a few children could speak well, but the others were very good listeners. They were introverts, but yet very good listeners. I also observed there were a few of them who were very good writers. So my students, a few of my, almost 15 of my students, my mentees are coming up with an anthology, a book, because they wanted to write their feelings. So listening, speaking, reading, writing, all parts, all forms of communication, we blended one course for it and we give them, impart them to the clients, wherein they can sharpen all the skills, but also let's say one is too much interested in writing. They get the opportunity to write with us. Some have become blog writers, some have become co-authors, and there are a few who would just like to speak. But for speaking also, it is important you know what the content is like, right? Where this writing part helps them. Reading enhances their vocabulary skills. Reading helps them getting more cognitive about their skills. So this is a interrelated parts of communication that we have formed one platform for all the clients.
Wonderful. I think deep knowledge about your own subject and what you're selling is very important. And that is what you are telling us here, Swarleen. Okay, so you have a hot selling book, Good Vibes Make Good Lives. Tell us about it and its availability. Good Vibes Make Good Lives, as the name suggests. Well, people have been laughing over to me and say, why didn't you write Good Vibes Make Good Lives? So this is for all the husbands as well. <laughs> good vibes is about what good vibrations you carry, how you carry them and how they are your strengths and how to create those good vibes. So this book has, uh, it's basically a fictional, I must say, fictional piece, um, 10 stories, all related to different aspects of personalities. Somewhere in some stories you see more about uh, confidence the other times it's a decision making skill the other time it is through a protagonist we've come out with these skills so this is available on amazon on goodreads it's available on flipkart it's available on kindle as well and it's available at our office as well if anybody wants to read it they can buy it from there the the thing that always encouraged me to write this book was I always wanted to do, um, you know, writing. I was always into writing. So this book encouraged me, when I wrote this book, this book encouraged me to share it mostly with the youth. Because they, when they are confused, when they are in the state, when they're in that temperament of what to be and what not to be, I think this book could help them. With a very easy vocabulary, it comes with simplicity of the language why because I wanted everybody to read it so I thought this could be one book which people would read and just think this is me maybe one character just they think of like in 10 of the stories this is me it's the connectivity that I wanted to bring in within me and my audience that was important so beautiful and the way you're speaking about so passionately about the book is encouraging me to buy one and read it fast. This is wonderful, Swaleen. Okay, tell us about your success mantra and the CSR activities you're involved in. So Rashi, I have always believed in karma. What you give comes back to you. I mean, that's what I believe. And I have strongly believed in doing. Your Plan of action will only come into being when you start working on it. Otherwise, it always remains a thought. So desire to do something with what dedication you are doing it and the determination that you have inside of you. Trust me, when I started with the talk room, I was sleeping barely three to four hours. And to my surprise, I was still not tired. I still did not feel the fatigue. And there I realized how much did it mean to me, how much importance it had for me to bring that awareness of the skills to people around. Today we talk of students having uh, soft skills important because they have to get through an interview. I started thinking, why not introduce it right at the age when children are going to their schools? So these, this determination of doing something has been my success mantra. And I still believe there is no shortcut in life. I've always believed fail, fall, so that you rise. Because until you have not tasted something bitter, you will not know how sweet actually tastes. So that's the mantra of success to me. And I think I've strongly believed in this. I have lived with this idea of never giving up. Because the day you think you are done, you're actually done. But the day you think there's a lot to do more, you just keep on working. Because there's no word as perfectionist in my dictionary. It's a myth for me. The more you do, the more you crave for it but still you never attain it. Our success belongs to our own selves, believing our own selves. How much do we believe in our own capacities? How much trust we have in our own abilities? Could be another success mantra. 
So these things have really helped me and have encouraged me to do better any day. I have never gotten up all these years with the thought that, oh, I have to go to work. I've always got up with the thing, oh, that's another day. Thank God. I have my work to do because somewhere I made my passion, my profession. So that's how I think even God has helped me. He has been kind enough, all my gratitude to God for being there and helping me out. The CSR activity that you're talking about, that I am working towards, I have always believed that our corporate social responsibility, our management concept, whereby we integrate social and environment concerns in our business operations and interactions with the, with the stakeholders, it really means a lot to me as well. Because if you see, you know, the purpose of this social responsibility is to give back to the community, is to take part in maybe the philanthropic causes and provide positive social value. So as of now, I'm working with four NGOs. One is a girl child NGO where they where we help them uh, get educated, not only academically, but also um, making them holistically grow up. I'm working with another NGO. The one that I'm talking about is Bal Shiksha, the Balika Shiksha. And uh, the other one is Door Foundation, wherein we give students this chance to do their higher studies. And again, making them prepare for the next world, making their future bright. I'm also working with one NGO, which is an Indo-Canada Education Council, sending students overseas who need our help to go and you know make their future. Apart from this, I'm also working with an old age home where we just go, spend some time, talk to the people, let them have the talks. I think this is pretty fruitful to me because it gives me that energy, that gives me that strength, that gives me that feeling of gratitude that I could be there for somebody who needed me. And also, it gives me the energy to bounce back when I come to my work that this is where, this is what has in fact helped me to go back to them, be there with them. And it rejuvenates me every time. It's a kind of, you know, I must say, a fulfillment which I get working with these people. Korn janta tha ki baate karne bhi ek tarike ka... CSR ho sakta hai. And this is what Swarleen has actually beautifully put. This is wonderful. Okay, Swarleen, one message to all the brands and communities. I would surely say Rome wasn't built in a day. They say 99% of the startups fail in their first initial years. Do not be heartbroken. I failed too. It's all right to fail. There are just some barriers which will make you stop. But the destination is far. Do not think if one thing did not work, the other will not. You never know what is what bright future you have in store. Keep making yourself work towards your brand. Religiously, in fact, work towards it. That's your progeny. That's your child. Just bring it up. Every time you fail and fall, tell yourself, this is not the end. I'm going to make it again. And trust me, go to the right people, go to the right organizations, which can help you. There are different people who may try to, you know, say that they help you, but I'm sorry to say, no offenses to anybody. They could just be opportunists. Do not fall into false traps. Very important for all startups and brands which are coming up. Do not fall into the false false traps. I have been through this. And I've, and I've learned from my own experiences. It's okay if there is nobody to help you. I'm just a call away. There are people who are call away. There are organizations that are working to build up the structures. You could be like getting into any incubation centers with some good universities. There is a lot that is happening for startups. Read it properly. Be informative. Be informed. That's very important. Just be yourself and you're going to make it. In case you're looking for public speaking 
services, corporate trainings, leadership development, or even life coaching. Swarleen is just a call away. Her details are available in the video and on the feed. Swarleen, thank you so much. Thanks for having me.